What up everybody? Back again with our volume unit. Today we are going to be discovering the formula for volume. So let's open up the box and see what our objective is today. Our objective today. Today I will be able to find the volume of prisms made of unit cubes by using the formula. So if we're going to be talking about the volume formula, we need to talk about what a formula is, right? So a formula in math is an equation used to solve a problem that always works, okay? It's a math rule. And there's examples of formulas that you have already done with Instructabeats, okay? So one example of a formula that we've done together is area. Area is length times width. That's the rule to find area. It's the equation that always works. And then as you work through math, you're always going to have to deal with formulas. So today we're going to talk about the volume formula. Later down the road in your math life, you're going to have to talk about this formula, right? The, the formula to find the surface area of a cylinder. So as you go throughout your math life, you're always going to have to work with formulas. Now, the important thing about a formula is not just knowing what it does and what it is, okay? We can't just memorize a formula without understanding what's actually happening when you're doing the math. That's terrible teaching if we just did that, okay? What we wanna start with is where the formula comes from. What is actually happening as you're using this formula? Just like when we talked about area, we don't just start by teaching you the area formula, we talk about how it's really an array of squares that's covering a 2D shape. We wanna do the same thing with volume. So before we teach you what the volume formula is, let's take a look at where it comes from. So that way when you are using the actual formula, you'll know what you're doing. So where our volume formula comes from, right? We wanna understand this first before we talk about what it actually is. Yesterday we did questions like this, right? We had to figure out what the volume of this rectangular prism was by counting the unit cubes that made it up. And we used our steps, find the area of the base, right? count the layers, and then skip count to find how many cubes there are. So because we can't see the area of the base, we would count the area of the top because that's gonna be the same thing as the area of the base. And we're gonna have four, eight, 12, 16, which means each layer has 16, right? And then we would count our layers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we had eight layers of 16, we would skip count to find that out. So really what we were doing is we were using repeated addition to solve for this rectangular prism. We know that repeated addition is really just multiplication. So what we could actually do, instead of following these three steps and having to skip count, is we could write what we did as a multiplication equation using the time sign to say the words groups of. Just like third grade when we would draw the circles and group them together, we're going to choose to view repeated addition as multiplication. And this is where our formula came from. And this is what the formula is. The volume is going to equal the area of the base times the height. When you look at this, this is the exact same thing we were just doing. We had to find the area of the base, right? In other words, how many was in each layer, okay? And then we were multiplying that by the height. And the height was our layers. We'd find the area of the base, because that would tell us how many cubes were in each layer and then we would skip count or do repeated addition for however many layers that we had. So now instead of using repeated addition all we have to do is use our formula which is going to take the area of the base and then multiply that by the layers. There's another formula which is actually the same exact formula you're doing the same thing except it's an extra step because sometimes you can't count the area of the base, so what you have to do is you have to split this apart into length times width. And we're gonna show you an example of that, but these two formulas say the exact same thing. That's why I made these the same color, because sometimes they don't tell you the area of the base, or it's too big for you to count all the squares that make up the bottom. So what you do is you use the area formula and decompose this into length times width, that will tell you the area of the base, and then you multiply it times the height. So both of these formulas are really the exact same thing. Just one of them has an extra step of having to multiply the length times the width to find the area of the base. We'll show you a couple different examples today where we'll use both of these. 
Now that we know our volume formula and we know where it came from, we can visualize what's happening as we use it. Let's take a look at the steps we're going to need to use it. Now these are going to seem very, very similar to what we did yesterday because we did repeated addition yesterday and today we're just going to use multiplication, which is the same thing. Okay, We're just using our formula instead of skip counting. So the first step is the same. You need to find the area of the base. Okay. The second step, instead of saying count the layers, we're going to say find the height. But really by the height, we mean how many layers do you have? And then step three, we're going to plug that information into our formula and use the formula to solve our volume. Let's take a look at an I do problem so you can see this formula in action. All right, so here we have the, form, the formula volume equals area of the base times the height. And I have a rectangular prism right here. And again, I can't see the area of the base, so I'm going to look at the area of the top which would be this part right here. And I see that the area of the top is three, six, nine units squared, right? And again, we have to have our square units, sorry, square units, because when we're talking about area, we're covering with squares. Now, if our area of the base is nine square units, that means there's nine cubes in each layer. So what's the height of my prism? Again, how many layers do I have? One, two, three, four. So now I know the area of the base is nine. And when you write it in the equation, you don't have to put square units, you can just put the number. And I know the height is going to be four because there's four layers. And when I multiply that, I find that the volume of this rectangular prism is 36 cubic units. And again, we have to use the words cubic units because we're trying to count how many cubes made up the shape. Let's take a look at a we do problem. So here I have the same formula, right? Volume equals area of the base times the height, except now I don't really want to count the area of the base, right? That's a lot of counting by ones. So what I want to do is just break apart the area of the base into the length times the width of the base, okay? And again, then I need to just multiply that times the height. If I want to do length times width, the width of my prism is three and the length is going to be five. So if I follow my area formula, instead of counting the squares one by one, I can say three groups of five, okay? So three times five, and then I still need to multiply by my height. So three times five is 15, and then how many layers of 15 did I have? One, two, three, four, five. So I have five layers of 15, so instead of skip count, I'm gonna do 15 times five, and my answer is going to be 75 cubic units. So I could have just used my area of the base times the height and counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and found the area of the base that way. But instead, all I did was break apart my area of the base into length times width, and I did 3 times 5, and I still got 15. So sometimes you can just count the area of the base if you want to. If it's a little bit bigger like this and you don't want to count one by one, you can just use the length and the width to help you find the area of the base. Let's do one you try problem, all right? So you go ahead and try this. You can use this formula or you can break it apart into length times width, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, if you're ready to try it, go ahead and push pause and then push play when you're ready to check your work. So hopefully you just tried this problem. So let's go ahead and solve it. I don't want to count these one by one, so I'm going to use my length and my width of the area of the base to help me find that. And then I'm going to find my layers, okay? So I know that the area of the base was going to be three times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So three times eight is going to tell me the area of the base. Again, that's length times width. And then I had four layers of that. And so when I multiply this, I'm just gonna go from left to right, following my order of operations. We have a great song about that if you wanna check it out. Three times eight is 24. So now I know the area of the base was 24 and I have four layers of that. So all I need to do to solve this is 24 times four. And the total amount of cubes that make the rectangular prism up is going to be 96 cubic units. So really what we tried to do today is not just show you the two formulas for volume that you can use, but show you where they came from. So that way when you're doing them, you're not taking a shortcut, you're understanding what's happening as you use them. That's the most important part about today's lesson, understanding where the formula for volume came from and how you can use it. 
thank you so much for checking out this lesson today. We hope that it was helpful. If you need a little bit of a reminder, you can check out our volume song. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you join our Instructor Beats family. Thank you again. Instructor Beats, out.